Hello everybody and good morning. My name is Luis Aleman and today I will be giving a presentation over embryonic stem cells and their legalization. An embryonic stem cell is a pluripotent cell that derives from the inner mass of a blastocyst. All a blastocyst is, is an early stage of pre-implantation in an embryo. Now for those of you who don't know where a pluripotent cell is, it is often referred to as a master cell which means they're able to make cells from all three basic body layers so they can potentially produce any tissue that the body needs to repair itself. So for example, if you have liver damage, uh, you can inject yourself with embryonic stem cells, guide those stem cells to the liver, and then those cells will start reproducing and acting like liver cells. So they can adapt to any environment to which they are presented. Embryonic stem cells are beneficial to the medical community because they can be used to treat and even cure spinal cord injuries, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, <clears throat> and heart disease, to name a few. Just between heart disease and Alzheimer's disease, they kill between 500,000 and 600,000 people in the U.S. alone. That's one in every four deaths in the United States. The reason research into embryonic stem cells and their uses is so limited is because their cultivation is illegal. We cannot further increase our supply of stem cells because the government will not let us. On August 9, 2001, former President George W. Bush announced that his federal funds may be awarded for research using embryonic stem cells if the following criteria are met. All those requirements mean is that we can only use the stem cells acquired before 9 p.m. on August 9, 2001. The government forbade their involvement for the funding of embryonic stem cells in the future. Embryonic stem cells, although controversial, have been proven to be beneficial. They have had positive results in clinical trials, especially the ones done at John Hopkins University on paralyzed mice. Researchers at John Hopkins University in Baltimore filmed an experiment they were taking a part of. In this experiment, mice they were experimenting on were injected with a virus that caused spinal disease, similar to that of motor neuron disease, which a lot of you may know as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. In this experiment, the mice were then injected with human embryonic stem cells, which led to them being able to move their limbs, support their own weight, and eventually walk. Now, mice and humans share 85% of their DNA, so if such results were possible in mice, they're definitely possible in humans. There are many people who oppose embryonic stem cells. They claim that it is, it is inhumane to kill a living being. Those who oppose embryonic stem cell research claim that being is living five to 10 days after conception and that at that point it is considered murder. Others claim that we should not let intellect take control of our actions, but rather our hearts and our emotions, that we should let them guide us guide us to make the morally correct decisions. In all actuality, five to ten days after conception, it is not an embryo, but in fact a zygote. All that means is it is a large cultivation of cells, which organs and tissue haven't even developed yet. Other reasons we should legalize our cultivation is because they benefit other fields of medicine, like pharmacy, not just biology. And it is also a beneficial alternative to abortion. <clears throat> With the discretion of the hospital and the persons involved, the cell can be cultivated from an abortion. This will not only leave the government out of the equation, but also make good use of the practice of abortion. It will give it a purpose. And in case you are against abortion altogether, embryonic stem cells can be harvested from umbilical cord blood as well. Will we let the morally correct decision prevent us from saving countless lives? There are people dying and suffering every second of every day from diseases like cystic fibrosis and age-related macular degeneration. If we have the answer to not only cures, but also limitless possibilities in medical advancements, then we, as a country built on opportunity and development, should take embryonic stem cells and use them to our advantage, not stamp a negative connotation on them.